everybody, and welcome to the Polka Dots Hair Scramble 2017. Here we are on the starting line. Just to my right is Tyson. And here we go. Not a bad start. Not a bad start at all. And there's Tyson getting by me. Ugh, a lot of people actually getting by me. Damn. Man, I never noticed that before. Tyson was getting a little wild. So we start out. We're out here on the uh, motocross track where I am not in my element, but... You know, whatever. Oh, we got a little, uh, something stuck on the screen there. Right here, I cut some guy off on a KTM here. You'll see his fender right there. And there's these different berms and stuff. And I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know the fastest lines. But that guy goes flying off the edge there. And here, okay, this is going to be a theme, all right? Right there where you see that I am not wanting to double anything at all. On some of the smaller ones like that, I could have doubled them. And I'm actually confident enough to double them. But if you guys watched my Valley Trail Riders video, you will have noticed at the end of it that I hurt my wrist. Well, these past two weeks, for a while, I was thinking I may have broke something in it. But actually, uh, the pain kind of started to go away a bit. It's, it's feeling a little bit better now. So I'm thinking it was just kind of, you know, like a, uh, a decent sprain. So my left wrist is actually sprained in this race. And I was, going, I was telling myself, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to race with it. And I'm just kind of going to play it by ear. You know, I'm going to see how fast I can go and if it bothers me. So that's what I'm going to do. And those doubles, you know, you come up a little short on them or something, you know, you can hit pretty hard on the suspension. So I wasn't willing to risk that and jam my wrist up and end my day. So you're going to see me rolling over some jumps like that. Now the stuff where like the tabletops and things like that, yeah, I was, I was hitting those pretty decent. But here we are. Um, I'm right behind David, who actually, um, spoiler alert, he won this race. Well, for our class, but he actually won the class, so that's pretty cool. Congratulations to him. I believe with that, he actually took over first place in the points, so that's good for him as well. And here we are. You know, we're going out on the first lap, and right now, I think I'm probably sitting in about sixth, seventh place, somewhere in there. So things aren't going too bad right now. Um, in the woods here, I'm feeling comfortable. Um, there are going to be a few sections later on that I'll point out where I didn't feel nearly as comfortable. So, yeah, there's that. Um, all right, uh, first off, uh, let, not first off, we're a ways off into the video, but actually Polka Dots, uh, the club in general. It's a, it's a pretty nice club, you know, they've, they've usually got a pretty nice race for us. I like the dirt, I like the woods riding we do. I like that they have a good flowing, relatively fast single track that we go out and race. I like that, that's pretty cool. But if there's one gripe, one gripe that I would have with polka dots in general, it would be this. Okay guys, if you're listening, you guys that lay out the track, the start, okay? At the start, there's a lot of families, there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of people who like to watch us on the flag drop, watch us take off, okay? And the past two years, right next to that spot where we take off, the uh, it's been part of the track, you know? There's been other guys just flying through there almost last year it was as we were taken off and this year from what I understand from what people were telling me it was slightly after we took off like within 30 seconds they had to get out of the way because the leaders were coming through almost running them over if there's any way possible for you guys to set it up so that there's like some sort of like little spectator area that's just kind of taped off where uh, racers won't be riding through so you know kids old ladies grandmas Whoever won't be getting run over, that would be appreciated. Other than that, awesome track. Um, of course, the track is awesome. Look at it. I mean, they, they do a great job on the track. 
Um, they've got people out here flagging the jumps and everything. It's just, you can tell a lot of work goes into this. So that that is definitely appreciated. So here we go. We're coming out onto the flat track area. And I take this corner really slow right here. The first, the first lap, usually I'm feeling stuff out. Um, it's relatively dusty out here, but that's to be expected. And uh, I'm not, I'm not a flat track racer, that's for sure. But I don't, I don't think I did too bad. I, you know what? When I was racing this, I felt like I was doing relatively well. I felt like I was carrying some pretty good speed. And then I wasn't doing that bad on the flat track. While watching the video, <laughs> I think I've changed my mind on that. So here we go, we're coming up to jumps. And of course, the first time through, I'm barely rolling through this stuff. Like this right here, this double. It looked kind of scary the first time. You know, I was worried I might, you know, like bottom out. But at Polka Dots, you guys did a good job. Um, even the doubles looked like they were kind of tapered down a little bit. They felt like relatively safe and secure and everything. If it wouldn't have been for my wrist being messed up, I I would have felt very confident coming out and jumping those just because of the way you guys had them set up. Coming out through this part of the motocross track, I, uh, I have my family up here, not this corner, a couple corners in where that little playground thing was set up. That's where my family comes to watch every year because I've mentioned this in previous videos at Polka Dots, but this is my hometown race. I was born in Midland, raised in Midland, and most of my family still lives in Midland. Look at that. I even made a comment, damn motocross guys. In the woods, I can stay with that guy. Out here, oh my gosh, he just eats me alive. But yeah, uh, Polka Dots is always a big deal for our family. Um, the whole family gets together, aunts, uncles. Uh, my grandparents missed it this year, but in the past they've come. And it's just, it's a really good time, you know, for the whole family to get together and enjoy, enjoy us coming out and racing. Because Tyson's here, Tyson's, uh, I've explained his situation before. He's my brother-in-law's brother, but he's family, he's relation. Um, my brother-in-law usually races this race, but he had to work. So there's usually at least three of us, and in the past we've had up to four of us racing in this race. Alright, so we're coming up pretty quick here to the Enduro Cross section. There is the bypass, which we're going to take here the first lap. And then there's the enduro cross section right there to the right. Now I'm running pretty, pretty low in the RPMs right now, so I don't think this guy ahead of me can hear me. And at first I was like, I'm just gonna find a way around. I usually, I'm not the type that'll come up on somebody and just start yelling, hey, you know, to let me by. I like to try to find a spot and actually try to get by them, but seeing how thick it was you know I gave him a little yell and he let me by so thank you thank you for that I probably should get out or yell out a quick little hey thanks you know as I go by but I, I don't know when I'm racing I'm not really thinking of that so I can hear this mean four stroke behind me so I know somebody is right up on my butt right now. Ah, oh, and I'm messing up and hitting trees and stuff. Luckily it was a little one. So I get off to the side here and let Simpson go by. He's been making a pass on me in a couple races here lately. I've actually had a, a real bad streak going. I think the past two races I haven't done very well. Cross the road and it was it was kind of nice that they had the road crossings all in one spot I think in years prior maybe they were further down I don't quite remember on that I always like this section right here though it flows real nice you can 
carry some good speed. It's not all whooped out, so you feel relatively safe carrying some good speed on it. Oh, here, we're gonna put a little plug in real quick, all right? The next two races, all right, we've got, uh, we've got Evergreen Creek coming up, and then we've got Kevin's race coming up, Chairman, all right? These are two races that people need to go to. Now, although, oh, I'm catching Simpson again. He, he did something there. I don't know what he's doing. But uh, th these next two races, I respect the clubs and the clubs putting them on, but the clubs have a whole lot of help, all right? I respect even more the guys whose private property, they go and cut trail in and let us come out and just ride their property. I, I that is awesome that's great that they they let that happen so i just I, it'd be great if we could get a whole lot of people out to these races um get a lot of people to show up because that would that would just be i, I don't even know what to say it just it just be great it'd be good for them they put in a lot of work so it'd be good if we could get a good turnout for it so if you're on the fence about going to either one of these races Come on, guys. Let, let's get together and let's make sure we make it to those ones for sure. And now I'm going to whine and complain about this area. Not really. It is what it is. You know, you have to be able to ride certain conditions. Well, with my wrist being the way it was, I was hoping for relatively smooth conditions. And this area out here was just choppy and beat me up. And my left wrist, the way it was, I, it's a sprain or something. I don't know quite what it is. There's Tyson getting by me. And I'm not a lot slower than everybody else, but I'm, I'm slower. And I just cannot hang on to the grip with the way my wrist is through, through as rough as this stuff is. So through this section, each and every lap, I am just, I don't know. I'm just... A hair slower than everybody else you see that guy's not just walking away from me but at the same time everybody is just a little bit faster than me so I, I hated this section I'm not gonna lie I hated it I knew I was going to um, the night before the race um, Matt sent me a message on Facebook with a picture of this logged off area and I knew, I just knew I wasn't gonna like that. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be though. I thought it was going to be even rougher because a lot of the times when they log off stuff like this, uh, they bring in the heavy equipment and it ruts it all up. And it wasn't quite that bad. So anyway, I've been passed by a lot of people in this section. I've let a lot of people by. And by this time, I probably dropped back to somewhere around 12th place. And by the way, this spot right here, there were two different spots where you could cross those logs. On the left side, you had to cross two logs. On the right side, you only had to cross one. So the right side, that was the place to go on that. Oh, there we go. There's one of those S-Class guys or SS-Class guys. I noticed that they started behind us this last race. Usually they start in front of us. Um, some of those guys are incredibly fast. I, I know the S, S class, it's, it's an age thing. It's not necessarily like, are you a A class rider or a B class rider or a C class rider? So some of those guys are really, really fast. I don't care how old they are, they're fast. Some of them are not so fast. <laughs> I like this section right here. These kind of like rolling whoops. These are, I always like those because you can get right on that back tire and just ride a wheelie through it. Oh, here we go. Um, looking like a little, like a little girl riding through there. <laughs> I swear, I'm not afraid to jump that, okay? Don't think that. I'm not afraid to jump that. I just don't want to hurt myself. <laughs>
Now, kind of what I'm thinking, what's going through my head here is like, okay, today I do not have the speed to keep with the guys out front. I know that. But sitting fourth in the points in this class, and I believe when I went through right here, I was in 12th place. Sitting fourth in the points, I just want to try to ride at a decent pace, not get myself hurt, and just come away from this race um, uninjured and with as many points as I can to try to protect that position. I know I'm not going to gain, but let's try not to lose all that much. Um, and then two weeks later at Evergreen Creek, you know, that'll give me two more weeks to heal up. That right there is when I'm going to try to come in and actually ride like I know I can ride. I, I know I'm a top five rider in this class. I know I can place that high because I have placed that high before. I've uh, had a sixth place finish. I've had a fifth place finish. Um, I've had numerous times where I should have been up there and just something crazy will happen. So I know where I should be finishing and I, I know what my limitations are. So that's just my plan to try to get through this race. Here we go. This time I'm going to hit this jump a little harder. Not real hard. But it was relatively smooth. And look at this one. Oh, I was up in the air for at least three quarters of a second. <laughs> And you know what? That's good. That's good for me because I don't have experience on a motocross track. Um, the only experience I have on motocross tracks are coming out here and actually racing. So, you know, it is what it is. And these ones over here, though, I was not going to try to double these. Even though it looked like I might be able to and not take too much of a shock, I just wasn't willing to risk it. And I know I'm, I'm talking about this wrist a whole lot, but here's the thing, okay? After I hurt that wrist at Valley Trail Riders, I am um, at work. I've got a relatively laid back and easy job. Well, just trying to climb out of the chair and putting a little bit of pressure on my wrist as I'm climbing out of the chair would shoot like shocks up my arm. So I'm really wanting it to heal up because we don't have that many races left. After polka dots here, we have three races left, and I'm in fourth place. So I I just need to hold on to this position, or do better if I can. You know, even move up into third, which I think third place. He's quite a bit ahead of me in points. So I, I'm really concentrating on just holding on to fourth at this point. All right, so now the fun stuff. We are coming up to the enduro cross section. Whoa. I think that might have been Logan, followed by Shane. I know that was Shane. And Taylin is right behind me. He'll be coming through in just a little bit. We'll only see him for a second. Coming up over this log bridge. And all this stuff is actually, it's steeper than it looks on the video. I mean, it's not too bad because, I mean, an amateur like myself can get through it. Right here, I got a little confused because it looks like people have been driving around this tape to the outside there. But I don't want to be a cheater, so I'm going to turn around and actually go over the log. See, there have been people driving through there, but I don't know. There we go. I don't, I don't want to be a cheater, so... Go through there, and I'm cutting to the left. This is when Taylin comes around me to the right. Right there he goes. And he's just all silky smooth through all this. Shane is gone. He's been gone for a while now. Right, here we go nothing to it right through no problems but with all the time it actually took me to go through there nah I don't know I'd, I'd rather just take the bypass there's no risk of me getting hung up on anything and I don't think it's any slower That's another, another gripe I've got, all right? Not just for polka dots, but for every single club. When you guys stick something in like this, I would like it if you stuck in a bypass that would take 
at least twice as long and even for the fast riders I would like it to take much longer because there should be some kind of penalty for taking the bypass and from my experience not just at polka dots but everywhere else when there's a bypass it doesn't take any more time so you might as well just take the bypass this is just a little demonstration here of me struggling again through this stuff Here we go, there's a little way around the log. And here's another thing that, um, another reason why my wrist was slowing me down. I actually couldn't stand up on the bike. When I stood up on the bike, then um, all of the shock from the forks and everything was actually coming up through my wrist and through my arms. So it was actually a lot easier for me to sit on the bike and grip it with my knees. Which definitely didn't make me fast, but it made it so I could keep going. Oh, and here's that left line I was talking about. Over the logs. Look up to the left, there's a photographer. I give him a thumbs up. Here we go, there's the picture he took. And I'm going to show you guys the actual website. You can go to this website right here. And you can look for your pictures and you can actually buy your pictures. Um, the guy was out there working. Oh, check the jump out here. I thought I did all great on this jump until this happened. <laughs> a little bit of a humbling experience. But anyway, yeah, that, that photographer, you know, he's taking his own time. He's going out there. He's taking the pictures. I haven't spoke to him, okay? This isn't some, like, sponsorship type thing or whatever, you know? It's just that I appreciate it when people come out here and take pictures because I like to see pictures of me riding. So it's really cool, and I appreciate that guy doing it. And I just wanted to show his website and everything. I'll probably put a link to it in the video description. So if you were at the race and you're interested in, in uh, buying the pictures or whatever, actually paying him for his work, Go ahead and stop by his website. I just thought it was a cool thing and wanted to give him credit for it. Alright, so I finished up a lap. We're back out here on the grass track, flat, flat track area. Oh, and then I come around the motocross area. And I'm pulling in here because I'm thirsty and I want my Gatorade. Well, that's my wife in front of me right there, the pretty little brunette. And I ask for my Gatorade. And guess what? She drank it. She drank my Gatorade. Can you believe that? Like, I'm out here racing, sweating, and she drank my Gatorade. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I go back out on the trail. Hey, there we go. What's up, man? I got you in the video. This kid always passes me. Always. Sometimes he passes me. Sometimes I'm fast enough that maybe he doesn't. Uh, no. He passes me most of the time. But uh, I thought this time I'd make sure to get him in the video. It doesn't take too long and he gets away from me here. But I, I don't think he's lapping me already, so I think I'm doing okay, because I think the X-Class started behind us? Or did they start in front of us? I'm not sure. Maybe he is lapping me. I don't know. So we're coming up to the bypass again. Anyway, we are coming up to the bypass. And this time I'm going to take the bypass, because I don't see any time saved. I don't see anything gained by going through the Enduro Cross. It's fun, yes. But it's not fun during the race. I, I don't know. Does that make sense? It's fun, but it's not worth it to risk it during the race. Because I might as well take the bypass. I don't know. So here I'm going along, and I hear fast guys coming up behind me. And I'm going to get over to let them by. And there's that little stick. You would think nothing of it. And I tip over and I wrapped my right wrist up in the bark buster. It got stuck in there. And here I am looking at it and moving it around to see if it's all right. Well, guess what? 
I sprained that one too. <laughs> Can you believe my luck? I have never hurt myself on these bark busters. And within the last two races, I got my left arm stuck in the bark buster and sprained my left wrist. And I got my right wrist during this race in there and sprained my right wrist. So I start the bike up. You know, after taking a little break there, I start the bike up and I'm like, all right, let's get going again. And this is as far as I make it. I stop again and shut it off and I've got to like lick my wounds and stretch out here and whatever. And then uh, there goes Pony. Pony down goes by. At this point, I know the race is over. Um, I go in here, finish it up. Um, I saw the white flag was coming out, so I knew there was only going to be one more lap, and I call it a day because I sprained my right wrist. And actually, my wrist, it's, it's, swol it's swollen. It's like... I went down and wrapped my hand up in the bar. Well, Here I am explaining to my wife that I messed my hand up. And she was nice enough. If you look in her hand, look, you see that? She one. bought me a Powerade. <laughs> I think she felt bad that she drank all my Gatorade while I was out there racing and she gave me a Powerade, so. She's a nice lady. I like her. And that's it. That's the race. That's Polka Dots. I'm hoping that I can heal up by Evergreen Creek and go out and actually give it my all. Anyway, guys, uh, this is Booster. It's been a rough three weeks three weeks. It's been a rough three races. I'm really discouraged. I'm trying to end this season on a high note. I'll be really excited if I can stay in fourth place, but either way, I'm going to go out and I'm going to give it my best shot. Um, I don't care if I have to duct tape my wrist straight to where I can't even bend them. I'm going to go out at Evergreen Creek and I'm going to give it everything I've got. So anyway, this is Booster and I will catch you guys at Evergreen Creek. <laughs>